Today's video is all about shipping containers. I've gotten so many questions on the kind of containers we use to build our container house, the cost of containers, where to buy containers, and today I'll be answering all of your questions as well as giving you some important tips and information about containers. There are many different kinds of shipping containers. There are standard dry containers, refrigerated containers or reefer containers, open top containers, flat rack containers, and other specialty containers. The most commonly used containers are standard dry containers, so we're gonna focus on those. They make up about 90% of the market and they come in several different configurations and sizes. They start at 10 feet in length and go all the way up to 53 feet. There are two different configurations for the height. Standard, which is just over eight and a half feet, and high cube, which is nine feet, six inches. The most common containers are 20 foot and 40 foot containers. As you get into the other sizes, they start to become more rare. Standard shipping containers come with one set of doors on one side, but there are other door configurations out there. Those containers are less common though. All containers are eight feet wide to allow for them to be transported by truck, except the 53 foot containers. Those containers are eight feet, six inches wide and mainly used on railways. For our container house, we used five 40 foot high cube containers and two 45 foot high cube containers for the structure. Have you ever heard of Malcolm McLean? Okay, time for a little history lesson. He is one of the most influential people you've never heard of. Malcolm McLean is the creator of the modern intermodal shipping container. Before what we know today as shipping containers were invented, cargo was loaded and unloaded by hand. It was extremely time consuming and labor intensive. After a few different trial runs, Malcolm developed the concept of shipping containers and brought it to life in the 50s with the help of mechanical engineer Keith Tantlinger, or Tantlinger, I'm not really sure. <laughs> By the late 60s, there were thousands of containers in circulation and the concept proved to reduce cost and increase efficiency. All thanks to Malcolm and Keith, the globalization of commerce and long distance trade was forever changed. In the late 60s, ISO standards for shipping containers were published by the International Maritime Organization. The ISO standards regulated and standardized the sizes, dimensions, and weight specifications of all shipping containers used for freight. I know when we started our project, I was very curious on how shipping containers were made. So, let me tell you. Shipping containers are mostly manufactured in China. They are made out of core 10 steel to help resist against the harsh environments they're typically in. Core 10 steel stands for corrosion resistant tensile strength and is designed to form a protective layer of rust when exposed to the elements to prolong the life of the steel. This doesn't mean it's rust proof though. If exposed to wet or salty conditions for an extended period of time, the rust will eventually make its way through the steel. This can be avoided by using good paint and keeping up with maintenance. The structure of a shipping container is composed of four corner posts, eight corner castings, sea channels along the bottom, perpendicular sea channels to support the floor, marine grade plywood, corrugated paneling for the walls and ceiling, one set of doors, and tubing on the top. The most common use for shipping containers is for shipping goods, but they are also used for offices, storage, homes, pools, coffee shops, etc. They can be moved around by the corner castings and placed onto trucks, 
ships, or rail cars. They ship a wide variety of products, like this portable flux core welder from today's sponsor, Ryland. Did you know this Ryland flux core welder is one of the most lightweight and beginner friendly welders on the market? This welder comes with everything you need to get started and it's super quick and easy to set up. It runs on 120, so you can use it almost anywhere. Flux core welding is extremely versatile. It can be used outdoors. It has the ability to weld through rust or dirty steel. And it doesn't require connection to a gas tank, making it a great option for on-site repairs or outdoor projects. Weighing in at only 11 pounds, the Ryland welder is super portable. And the shoulder strap makes it easy to transport and move around. The Ryland Flux Core Welder is perfect for beginners or DIYers looking to get into welding. The Synergic MIG technology makes it easy by setting the wire speed and voltage automatically based on the thickness of the steel. With the self-developed RI chip, the welder offers great arc performance, resulting in less spatter and better weld appearance. The Rylan welder is great for small projects and is capable of welding steel ranging from 0.04 to 0.2 inches thick. This CSA certified welder comes with multiple safety features to protect against overheating, overcurrent, overvoltage, and undervoltage. The Ryland welder can weld at 95 to 127 volts and adapt to a 15% voltage fluctuation. All right, today we have a fun little project that we are gonna do with the Ryland welder. Let's go. You guys know we live a life of Ryan Weld Paint Repeat out on the ranch. So today we are going to use the Ryland welder to create a stand for our string lights using leftover rebar. I absolutely love the simplicity and portability of this welder. With our house being three levels and having to climb ladders all of the time, this welder is going to really come in handy. It is super easy to use and makes great welds. I love welding with flux core because it gives you the ability to weld through rusty or dirty steel and still produce a good weld. So thanks to the Ryland welder, we have these light stands we can move around for our string lights. Amazing. Don't forget to click the exclusive link in the description to purchase the Ryland flux core welder and live your version of Grind Weld Paint Repeat. Special thank you to Ryland for sponsoring this video. There is no such thing as a truly new container. The closest thing to a new container is called a one-way or one-trip container. This means the container was shipped only one time, usually from the factory to whatever port it's going to. The one-way containers are definitely the best quality you can get, but they also tend to be the most expensive. ISO standards and specifications have a few different categories for used containers. Cargo-worthy containers are usually the best used containers available. This means they can still be used to transport goods and are usually in pretty good condition. Wind and water tight rating means the containers are a step below cargo worthy. They no longer meet ISO standards to be used for freight, but they can still be used for storage and other purposes. 
As is, is the lowest rating. This means the container is not wind or watertight and usually has some significant damage. The cost of a used container is sort of like the used car market. Size, condition, age, and availability play a huge role in the overall cost of a used container. The best place to buy a shipping container is near any major port. That's where they have the most options and the best prices. If there is no major port or distribution point in your area, there are companies like Drybox that offer containers for sale. Be wary of online scams involving container sales because those seem to be increasing recently. When shopping around for a used container, there are a few main points you'll want to check. Check to see if the doors function properly and make sure that they seal well. Check the corner posts for damage. These are probably one of the most important parts of a shipping container because they hold most of the weight of the container. And get up there and check the roof for corrosion or damage to avoid leaks in the container. If you would like to see more in-depth videos about building a container house, check out our YouTube channel where we document important steps like setting up the foundation, cutting out panels and reinforcing openings, the most out of your product. <laughs> Converting the original container doors to beautiful glass doors. Craning the containers into place. Installing doors and windows. And many, many other steps and custom design features. Our container house is three stories high and made up of seven shipping containers, and we are building it ourselves. Starting with zero construction experience, we are learning as we go and sharing every step of this crazy project along the way. We have so many unique design details in our build, and we are huge fans of repurposing and reusing materials. So be sure to subscribe to join us on Pacific Pines Ranch as we try to bring our dreams into reality and face many challenges along the way. Okay, and thank you for taking Container 101. Don't forget this information will be on next week's test and your grade depends on it. Just kidding. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a thing or two and see you in the next video. Help support our channel by leaving a comment, liking, and sharing this video. And as always, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up with our projects and adventures on the ranch. We put out new videos every Saturday and during the week, so don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss any. Okay, bye.